AQ's Blog and Grill. We're uh, very happy today at AQ's Blog and Grill to have Jay Bear join us. Jay is one of my favorite people to follow on Twitter, uh, and his blog, Convince and Convert, is absolutely fabulous. If you're not there with Jay, you should be. Uh, two great books that I've read uh, so far of Jay's, uh, The Now Revolution, which he co-authored, and his uh, new book, uh, Utility, which I think is a home run. I, you know, a lot of books come out about social media, social marketing. Um, this kid, this young man from Indianapolis, uh, Indiana, has, uh, has hit a home run. So welcome. Thank you, Jay, for coming here. Thank you very much. I appreciate those kind words. It's fantastic to be here. Uh, I had a birthday recently, so 44 now, so I don't feel like a young man anymore, I'll tell you that. Uh, I feel like a broke down has been, but I appreciate you like the, you liking the book. <laughs> well, it, it's great. And I think, you know, the key for me was reading the, um, the, that branding people today, marketers today, have got to be thinking more about helping than hyping. And is that one of the keystones of, of utility? Oh, absolutely. I mean, consumers have all the power now. They, they have the ability to ignore messages, to uh, make decisions with infinitely more information at their disposal than ever before. And this idea that somehow technology has forced us to do everything more quickly and that we have to uh, convert tomorrow and here's another coupon and let's shout louder and let's tweet 18 times a day with coupons and and special offers, it just doesn't work. It just it just doesn't work. And I know you do some work in agriculture. One of the things I talk about when, when I do presentations about utility is that, you know, we've got to change our marketing philosophy from hunting to farming, right? We, we have to uh, kind of work to gain customer trust and, and sales and advocacy over the long term, not the short term. And I think being inherently useful uh, and helpful is the way to do that. Yeah, cool. And you know, I think the thing about nurturing sales, we have to get back to that and, and nurturing leads. It's, it's not about, yes. as you say, converting overnight and, and blasting people with information they probably don't think is relevant. So. Well, I think one of the challenges we've had in business forever is, is even though we all know, right, we've all heard this and we all know this to be true, that it's much easier to keep a customer than gain a customer. Uh, we all know that to be true, but we don't actually behave that way. Right. Uh, we don't actually architect our businesses or our marketing as if that were true, even though we know it to be true. Uh, Joe Jaffe wrote a terrific book uh, two or three years ago called Flip the Funnel, which talks about that premise, right? That keeping customers active and, and getting them to advocate on your behalf is a much smarter move than continuing to dump more and more and more dollars and effort into customer acquisition. And, and uh, utility kind of takes those same themes and applies it into today's kind of content marketing framework. Right. So the book's been out for just a little bit now. What what kind of response are you getting from corporations, from organizations that should be listening to you? Are they? Yeah, it's been terrific. I mean, the book hit number three on the New York Times bestseller list. We were number one on Amazon.com, number one on Barnes and Noble globally. My mom is an English teacher uh, and and taught uh, high school literature for like 35 years. So. At one point, uh, my book was number one, and like something from Steinbeck was number six. So I took a screenshot of that, emailed that off to her, like, "Yeah, suck on that, right?" So that was uh, that was a proud moment. Uh, but the book the book is doing great, thank you. And uh, I've I've had the opportunity to to speak with a number of companies, uh, small, medium, and large, about the utility principle, and it's a lot of fun coming into companies and and say and you know sort of saying, "Look." you don't have to create marketing that people hate. You can actually create marketing that people want to receive. Right. You can, in fact, create marketing so good that people would pay for it, that has so much intrinsic and inherent value that if you said, hey, would you kick in a couple of dollars for this marketing, people would say, yeah, I absolutely yeah. would do that. Yeah. It is possible to make that happen and then show a bunch of examples of companies that are doing it today. And so lots and lots of uh, travel right now, which is terrific, uh, home today, but lots of uh, time on the road, uh, helping companies figure this out and sort of change where they look at marketing, which is, uh, it's a fun assignment. I'm, I'm honored to be able to do it. That's great. I, I mean, isn't it funny that we've heard for the last, I don't know, eight to 10 years that, that organizations are becoming customer centric. And they're becoming customer centric because the customer is now in control. The power has shifted. And yet, yeah. they still have business models from the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. It, yeah. How long can that last? Well, and, and I think there is a greater 
sense of customer centrism, but primarily in customer service and customer care. Okay. So my first book, as you mentioned, the open is the now revolution, where we talked a lot about companies having to re-architect their customer service and be faster and things along those lines. Uh, and, and you're starting to see many more companies embracing that and, and doing real-time customer support on Twitter and Facebook, et cetera, and uh, you know, not making people sit in call centers for, for hours. And you know, all of that, I think, is happening. But that is a very reactive form of customer centrism. Right. Um, what we're talking about in utility is, well, let's make your proactive marketing customer centric too. Yeah. That, that you could actually you know, be useful. You could create marketing that, that people are excited to be exposed to. And that's a whole nother level exactly. uh, of, of being customer centric. Now, is that going to happen overnight? Of course not. I mean, you know, as I talk about in the book, yes, there are some, some tactics and operational things that you can and should do to embrace utility, but it all starts with culture. You, you either believe that this kind of marketing is going to pay off eventually. Yes. Or you don't. Right. Uh, and if you don't, you're never going to do it, or you're certainly not going to do it right. Right. And I guess the other saying that's going around, and uh, and I think in your book, Utility, you, you pretty much confirm this, is that culture eats strategy. That yeah, it, Unless your absolutely. culture is right, it doesn't matter what your strategy is, uh, if they're not aligned. Well, and, and, and I think that's always been true, but it hasn't really been importantly true for a long time. Because if you think about for the last you know 50 years or so, um, the strategic shifts weren't weren't as um, dynamic, right? You didn't have to say, well, let's now put the customer in the in the primary spot. I mean, you had strategic shifts, of course, based on automation and supply chain and and the rise of digital and things like that. But they weren't fundamental strategic shifts; right. they were evolutionary strategic shifts. And now we're talking about having a whole different set of values, uh, and and that your business operations will then stem out of these new values. And and so. While culture has always eaten strategy, uh, I think today that actually matters. Yeah. AQ's Blog and Grill.